What do you need to do with a calculator? Graph, find intersections, find maxes, find mins. Okay. Graph, let's just pick up a crazy polygon. Graph, find intersections, find maxes and mids. Let's say I wanted to know when this equation intersected or solve an equation, this equals five. You can graph y equals the left side, y equals the right side, second calc, intersect, bam, bam, bam. Make sure you can do that. Make sure you can find maxes and mids. Second calc, max, min. Say we want to find the location of a max. Make sure you set a left bound set a right bound, then have your calculator guess. Okay, calculator guesses, it uses a numerical process to find uh, the best guess as what the max is, but it does not like algebraically solve it. So it might not get exact answers all the time. How do you graph a log function? Like let's say you wanna graph log base two. Well, some calculators have log base, math, A, log base, you can graph log base two of X to see the graph of log base two. Don't be deceived though. If you, I like to use trace, look at it, it looks like it's a quadratic that starts at this value. But notice if I plug in zero, I don't get anything. If I plug in point one, oh, I get a negative. Plug in point zero, zero, one. Oh, I get a negative. It's a log base two, right? So let's plug in one eighth, negative three. Let's plug in one thirty second, negative five. Let's plug in one sixty fourth, negative six. Okay, so it, you don't see what you want to see. You know what I'm talking about? That's how you graph logs. You know, I graph exponentials. Boom. Okay, move into this. All right, um, we didn't have, we had some homework questions. I don't think we had that many test questions where we had uh, exponential functions. We started with a amount. We increase or we decrease by a certain amount. We're decreasing by 43%. We take 100% and we will subtract 43% every year. So you get a percentage of, you get this 57% of this value every year if you're decreasing 43 percent um cool so that's the first thing is this one minus or one plus r every year t is measured in months 12 months in one year so Every year, I decrease 43%. So like, this needs to be to a first power after one year. So that we decrease 50%, uh, decrease 43% that year. How do we get this one when I plug in 12 months that? That means if I'm six months, I'm only taking, you know, half of, not really half of that, but that's it. After 24 months, I will decrease another 43%. Thinking about it. Let's look at the rates of change of F, plus 2, plus 3, plus 3, plus 2, plus 0. This is great. 
gross. Rates of change of the rates of change are plus 1, plus 0, minus 1, minus 2. The rates of change of the rates of change of the rates of change. Constant. If this is constant, it's linear. If this is constant, it's quadratic. If the rates of change were linear, then the rates of change and the rates of change would be constant. So this is one of that test questions. The rates of change being linear means the function is quadratic. This is cubic. You could have stat edited, plotted data, view it, turn your stat plots on. Here's one thing, guys, really quickly. If you're actually paying attention to this, if you have your stats plot on and you don't have anything in stat edit, Let's say you reset your calculator. First of all, if you reset your calculator, your plots are going to be off. So if you use stat edit, you need to put your stat plot on to see your, your, your data. Let's say you put your stat plot on, but you don't have any data in your calculator. If you press graph, it's going to say that. This happens to a lot of students like, what's going on? My calculator broken. It's not broken. It's that you have your stat plot on but there's no data to plot. So it's just like breaks. If you just put in a quick point, one, one, you can keep your stat plot on, stat plot on, and you can see that point one, one. So just FYI. This is a great, great situation. <laughs> this is very realistic. Like while you guys are taking tests and be working on your next unit or like in the days before and be working on your next unit. And at the beginning of the day, I'd be cranking stuff out. As the day progresses, it gets harder and harder to recreate material and create good material. So like, I I totally feel what Mr. Passwater is saying. You start at this rate and then you slow down. Total number of So it's eight, 12 problems per hour for the first two hours. Okay, cool. Now, that means after two hours, I have 24 problems. Then I need to add to the total amount of problems. Okay. Let's say I worked three hours. If I worked three hours. I had two hours of 12 problems per hour plus one hour of eight. I got 24 plus eight is just 32. Look, if you plug in three into this equation, you get 32. If you plug in three into this equation, you don't. If you plug in three into this equation, you don't. If you plug in this uh, three into that equation, you don't. So just like kind of understanding versus like, oh, how did you get that? It's like, eh, I just kind of figured it out. The key is like, I have the 24 problems that I've already made. And then this T minus two means if I plug in three, I've worked one hour in this next uh, rate. I mean, I'm just gonna go ahead and figure this out. 324 divided by 108 should be a third. Or it's 108 divided by 324. That's a third. Okay, so. Could you stat edit? Yeah, sure. That's good. All right. The worst questions of all of AP pre-calculus. Guys, when residuals are close to zero, your model is good. Residual is actual minus predicted. 
We just kind of talked about this. If your residuals are all zero, you have a pattern. However, if your residuals are all zero, your model is perfect. So like, that's great. Now, what do we discover is that models where your residuals do not make a pattern are good models. Models where residuals make a pattern are bad models. This does not have an apparent pattern. So this model was appropriate. Now, it goes to like, what's a pattern? <sighs> Hopefully it'll be obvious. This doesn't have a pattern. These are very apparent patterns. So I would use that. Oh, okay. I have a model. I have data. My model produces a value of six. Sorry, my model produces a value of one and a half. The model is my prediction. The data is my actual. Residual is our actual minus our prediction. We get a negative residual. However, be careful. That doesn't mean underestimate. My prediction is bigger than my actual. My model produces a value that's bigger than my actual. A negative residual points to an overestimate. I don't memorize this. I just kind of figured it out. Residual is negative, model produced an overestimate. Yeah, sorry, there's not that many calculated questions, but like we did our best to give you like lots of questions. And from your lots of questions, you'll see these questions, having a calculator or not having a calculator, no big difference, okay? Uh, P and Q, the residuals, are not the same sign. They have opposite signs. P will be, is these are residual plots? No. Let's make sure we understand this is our model. These are actuals. So for the residual point P, my actual minus my predicted is going to be a positive value. My prediction is under the actual. My residual point Q, my actual minus predicted, this is less than that, is going to be negative. My model is going to be overestimated. The residuals are going to have opposite signs. Oh. There will be more error here than there is here. It's a good question. It's just different than kind of what we've seen. That's it. Peace.